Did we answer your question? Yes, you did. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Thank you for listening, by the way. You got it. Keep listening. Listen, before before we go any further, um, I'd like to thank our sponsors, uh, Larry Allen Seal Coating, again. And that's uh, Allen and Son Seal Coating. You know the phone number, don't you, uh, birthday girl? Yes, Tell you do. 847-980-6914. For the best seal coating around, make sure Alan and Son. Yeah, write that down because uh, not too late to get that gift. Eight four seven nine eight zero six nine one four. You'll feel my, good about I need my I need my deck seal coated oh, in Florida. Well. Listen, well, and well, I also want to thank we got to send. Um, he travels. That's that seal right. coat will travel. Trust me, we're going to work out a deal. <laughs> Snobhounds Canine Environmental Protection wear disguised as Canine Contour. Snobhounds.com, and would also like to thank Casey Tool, another weekly sponsor of ours tool that are available through Snap-on Mobile Tool Distributors. And don't forget my motivational website and blog at lauradionjones.com. And you can also find a link to my website through our WRMN web website under Programming the Laura Dion Jones Show. In the studio with us today are Mike Hunziker, Jeff Myers, Darlene Kulin. Kulin. Thank you. Along with former Illinois State Senator Steve Rauschenberger. Okay, Meanwhile, George you're listening. Rauschenberger. Oh, and George Rout, did he George still? I thought George you were leaving. Oprah's oh, he's still here. Oprah, Oprah, no, Oprah. Laura's assistant. Oh. Okay. You could be the Ed McMahon. He could be the Ed McMahon. Hey yes. Oh, okay. Straight man. You're listening to the Laura Dion Jones Show on WRMN 1410 AM. Mom, if you've got your hands in that dishwater, make yourself some iced tea, sit down, and finish listening to the show. If you've got something to say, call in and say it at 847 Was that your own mom? 1410. Really any moms. Oh, any listening. mom. She had me any weeping. Ma, I, I could see in a, you know, <laughs> dish, that's dish my daughter hands. right there. No, I haven't no, seen no. her in two years, but she tells me it's the show. I 20 years. <laughs> Listen, I have something I want to tell the senator here. Uh, for, uh, this was in, in um, whatchamacallit, Parade yep. magazine from some. You saw this Yes, already? I read that. Oh, I read that. How about the tax here. break? Okay, let me tell. You tell. Yeah. Tax break for films get mixed reviews. A lot of the states are uh, contributing to Hollywood production budgets, and they're giving many uh, away tens of millions of dollars in tax incentives to production companies that shoot movies and TV shows inside their borders. As much as 50% tax credit on the expenditures of a, a Filming production, fifty percent—that's a lot of money. That's too much when you have small businesses that are going under. Yeah, here I, I will. You know, in all fairness, I'm not a big fan of film tax credits. I think Hollywood has kind of um, mesmerized the legislature. But I will tell you this: most of those tax credits are what you call but for tax credits. B-U-T-T-4 or yeah. B-U-T-4. B U T F O R. Okay. Oh. <laughs> but She's on another, another concept. Of it. <laughs> not B U T T. But Sorry, I'm being <laughs> Elgin's biggest loser. <laughs> and, and, and the only point I want to make is in other words, there's no revenue at all if they don't shoot That's the right. film yeah. in your city. And there's no bragging rights and there's no ego gratification, but, excuse but me. But what I'm saying is that the tax credits that get paid to them come 100% in most cases from the revenue they bring. So in other From words, filming. yes. Okay. So in other words, if there was no filming, there's there's no tax break yeah. and there's no tax credit, but you end the state ends up with less revenue. So in other words, it, it's unfair for those guys to use their mobility to kind of um, and their clout and their clout and their their uh, fame because I mean they were big fundraisers for a certain guy who's mm -hmm. in the White House today. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, it, it is it is you know unfair for them to use that that to kind of uh, extort tax mm -hmm. behavior out of the states. But I, I just would tell people that it's not like they take our income taxes and give it to them. What they do is they get a big break on what they spend already. But it's the already. break. It's the break that we need. It's the break that the taxpayers well, need. It's yeah, the break that the citizens right. of Cook County need. And it's the break that the small businesses need to stay in business. I, I'm agreeing with you. I just wanted to be fair to the other I mean, I, yeah, I'm telling you. You can right. see I'm getting heated up. Yeah. My face getting red here. I mean, I got steam coming out of my ears. I was a small business owner for years, and one of the things that really hammered me were the taxes. Yes. Yeah. And I got some friends right now that are in some serious binds, and it's because of the taxes. Yep. Um, small business owners, they, they, they make. And the regulation and the litigation. I'll never remember that. Never forget that. You know, I used to have a store right up the street here at the old Ackerman's building, which is now R.R. Donnelly. And I just remember how, what a pleasant experience it was working with the city of Elgin being the last major store open in downtown Elgin. No, you can't put your dumpster here. No, you can't do that. No, you can't mm. take deliveries here. I mean, this is in the days when downtown Elgin was pretty safe for almost anybody because sure. it was pretty empty. Mm -hmm. um, so you're right. If, if we don't take seriously supporting the kind of people that help give us good jobs, that allow people to have good incomes, then 
then things only get worse. I mean, that's what's happened in states like uh, Detroit or states like Michigan, where Detroit's falling Detroit apart. Detroit is just uh, Ohio. Right I mean, now. And those are the states. And look at California. I mean, they have figured out a way to regulate everything, and they're also losing, you know, hundreds of thousands of, of residents every single year. Mm -hmm. And it's the productive and the the the. You don't the, think the it's the earthquakes, people. the fires? Well, it could be those For two. For me, that's, I, what it, that's what would do it. would be a couple of tremors, a <laughs> couple of landslides, mudslides. That would be well, it. That, that might be it, too. But, I mean, that, that was the miracle of America mm -hmm. for 30 years. And that was everybody's that, gold in the bottom yeah. California. Oh, yeah. The single most important thing when you talk to business executives about where they're going to locate is the political culture. Meaning the well, tax breaks? No, not, not just the tax breaks, but also if, I'm not going to put a plant anywhere where I'm going to get shook down or where the taxes are going to change every two years or where the governors are going to jail or, or where every time I turn around all state government talks about doing is raising taxes. Mm -hmm. Remember Rod Bogoyevich spent five years saying businesses weren't paying their fair share of taxes. That Just think of what, what that meant to the corporate location people. Uh, out everywhere else in the country. Mm -hmm. Nobody wanted to bring a new plant here. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, uh, uh, Navistar is trying to move its headquarters and there's people protesting out front. Today, uh, downtown Chicago at the Caterpillar uh, uh, stockholders meeting, there's protests so, because uh, apparently bulldozers are used in the Middle East and, and the, the, the pro-Palestinians don't like that. And uh, I mean, you know, if you turn businesses political, if you, if you don't treat them as corporate citizens, um, and you make them villains, don't be surprised if they want to put their plant in South Carolina or North Carolina or, or in you know, places where they are treated with respect. Well that's, said. That's a hard thing for the Chicago guys to get. I mean, they've, they've sat in the ec one of the economic engines of America for so long, they don't realize that you, know, you can kill this goose, you know, keep choking it. We're concerned about um, the election turnout for everybody, and why can't we get a higher voter turnout in Illinois? What do you suppose that is? And how do we get more people engaged? Uh, well, how do we, we get more people to believe in you guys? We, 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 we've got too many boring candidates like me, I think. Um, <laughs> no, you know, I, I actually, I think our voter turn. I mean, some people are concerned about it, but I actually think voter turnout's okay in America. In some places, they have voter turnout in the mid-90s or the high-90s. Uh, in fact, the Soviet Union used to achieve nearly 99% voter turnout uh, because but they, they forced, yes, they forced people say, they to vote. They had a different technique. So in a way, when people don't vote because, you know, I don't know enough about the school board election next week or, I, you know, I don't have a feeling about that's not a bad thing because it means the people who do go are the ones who are motivated. So sometimes I think we spend too much time worried about um, the percentage of people that turn out. What, what I think is more important is, are you getting honest government? Are you getting good information? I mean, you know, if you live in West Dundee, you, know, you don't, but I mean, if you did, a lot of people are really happy with the government up, and, I mean, with the, the village board mm -hmm. up there. So there's no reason for you to have a 98% voter turnout for a village board election if things are being well run, as long as you're getting good information and, and there's transparency and there's honesty. So I guess I'm more concerned about how do we get better candidates and better government than better turnout. Um, I think you have to look in other sectors of the population. I think you, just because, no offense to anybody, I know she's a Republican, I think she's a Republican, Meg Whitman, she would not be my <laughs> first choice for governor of California or wherever she's running for, just because she was the CEO of That's eBay. Right. She has over a one billion, billion with a B dollars net personal net worth. She would not be my, <laughs> my first, first choice. choice. Just because she can, you know, do whatever she did with eBay doesn't mean she could do any better out there than the Arnold did. Yeah. And I uh, mean, you, you know, he had you know, sometimes it is what it is, and sometimes things, you know, are, your hands are tied. I remember a long time ago, a long time ago, do you remember Jane Byrne? When mm -hmm. Janie got yes. in, yes. she yes. was running, and I'm, my ex-husband, oh, excuse me, I was a tot, but my ex-husband was on the Chicago Police Force and all this, that, the other thing, and we happened to be involved in some of the stuff with her. And when she was first running, and she and everybody was PO'd at Eddie Verdoliak and Eddie Burke and all that little, right. what they used to call the evil cabal, the unholy cabal, and when I get in, it's this, that, the other thing. Well, then when Janie got in, and she had already not disparaged these other guys that, that were the backbone of the city council, but she couldn't get anything done. She couldn't get two ants to cross State Street without their help. Yeah. And then when she started to get in bed with them politically, so to speak, yeah, so to speak so everybody to speak. who voted like for but her... Four but four, yeah. But <laughs> four, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make fun of me. No, no I, with uh, me, I was making fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you know what I'm saying? So yes. what I think you y'all need to do, y'all need to be the, the 
politicians or whoever decides on the candidates, I think you need to look for people in other um, sectors. Yeah. I, you know, like Mr. Smith goes to Washington kind of thing. And I think we also need to tell the politicians to lower the requirements to get on the ballot. We shouldn't have to do as many petition signatures. There shouldn't be as many gotcha rules where people get sued or they try to keep you off the ballot. Mm -hmm. There shouldn't be so many barriers to entry into politics. I mean, they passed four bills in the General Assembly over the last year that made it harder to get on the ballot instead of easier. If you're doing a great job down in Springfield, you shouldn't have to protect yourself by making it hard for other people to run against you. We should have an open ballot state mm -hmm. like a lot of other states do. You know, in some states you pay a simple $25 fee and you can have your name on the ballot and run for the legislature. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go through the rigmarole of collecting petitions and all those things. So, I mean, better candidates, easier access to the ballot, more opportunity. And, you know, something somebody asked about the school district U46 has gone through a tough year financially and what would you do to help the schools? Well, you know, that, first of all, you, the schools can't do well unless the state is a dependable and honest partner. And we have not been, unfortunately, for the last four or five years. As the state's gotten deeper in its mess, we have been less um, dependable in, in providing state aid, which helps local school districts um, manage their budgets. I think we've got a, a very good superintendent in U46 here I do locally too. in Elgin. I agree. And, totally. I, and I'm very impressed with the superintendent up in, uh, in District 300, which covers Carpentersville and Dundee and, and that area and to the west. So we've got good people. We've got good teachers in the classrooms. Mm -hmm. We really do. I Outstanding. Mean, but we're, we're also, we, also, we have to also be honest with ourselves. We're running a, a system that Harry Truman would recognize if you brought him back. Mm -hmm. We know so much about how kids learn today that we didn't know in 1960. We know so much about early brain development and the opportunity to bring kids along three to five and, and five to six. We should be doing more on the front end of the educational system and less at the high school and the other end. So we, we, need, we need to really ask the educators to come to the table and say, going forward, okay, mm -hmm. how do we restructure schools so that they're in the best interest of kids and knowing what we know about um, child Physical learning. Fitness. When you lose a kid, when if you don't have a kid by the time they're 12, you're never going to be able to spend enough remediation money to make that kid successful. Mm -hmm. And we're losing our kids in the Chicago public schools in particular at young ages. Don't you think that's part of the parents' problem too, though? It, it, it begins listen, at home. The, the, there are there, there's lots of problems, but we're spending on average in this state between 12 and 13 thousand dollars per child. You put 20 kids in a room, that's a quarter of a million dollars. You're not Tell spending, me that again. Say that again. Twelve to thirteen thousand per child per put, year. Yeah, September per year. to June. Right. So put twenty kids in a classroom. That comes up to two hundred and sixty thousand uh -huh. dollars. Your teacher doesn't cost. I you was going to say, what is the teacher making? The, well, sixty-five, seventy, whatever it is. But uh -huh. the point is, there's a lot of money going into education, and a lot of it is really more worried about the regulations and about the contracts and about what they've always done. Uh, to be honest, today we run a system, particularly in Chicago public schools, that's good for adults that work in it. It pays good wages, it's got a good retirement, and it's got pretty good working hours, but it doesn't serve the needs of kids today. 